So it's been a while since I've done a non-MBL video, so I thought I'd break that that streak and actually put out some content. But I won't be doing any VGC uh, 17 because basically my main focus for that is Worlds now. So I do have Liverpool coming up this weekend, but my main focus is on Worlds. So I'm going to be taking a little bit of a break from that and do some Battle Spot doubles instead with this team that was basically my most successful team I made in VGC 15. So I'm bringing it just completely over, exactly the same as 15. All the spreads are the same, all the items are the same, so I'm definitely going to be at a disadvantage here. Um, so I've, I've already tried to record since you can probably see there's a change of scenery back uh, here and I am back home away from university, but that does mean I'm on my farm internet now, so hopefully this doesn't go that badly because I have already had a disconnection on turn one trying to start this video, so already a good sign. But we'll see, we'll see. See how successful this team can be in this new format because there's all the changes, so this might be sub a suboptimal version of this team. I'm sure I could edit it, edit it slightly so that it was updated enough for Battle Spot Doubles, but kept everything the same. Like, I've got Citrus Berry on Suicune when I'm sure one of the Super Berries would now be more efficient. And I don't have a Z-move on this team either, so... Because that wasn't a thing back in 15, but... I mean, it's, it's been like over two years since I've used this team properly, so... It's going to be a little bit of nice nostalgia as well, especially a couple of the, the sets that I'm going to be using. Hopefully I get to pull off some stuff, but... Oh well. It seems like no one wants to play Battle Spot Doubles now, which is a shame. So I'm pretty much going to have to stall until someone appears right now, but not right now. Um, but yeah, so with VGC 17, I wouldn't want to like uh, unfocus my mind, I guess, from what I would be taking from Worlds. Not the best way of describing it, but that's the word that came to mind. But yeah, I would want just to focus on that one team. So, finally found someone. Yeah, so I, I would only want to focus on that one team rather than any other fun stuff in 17. But doing fun stuff in an unrelated format, basically, at the moment. So, this is going to be fun. So, we got Weather Mode and the Terrain Mode. So, this is going to be interesting because I haven't fought Electric Terrain with this team at all. So, Excadrill would be nice, but Raichu is a thing now. I do think Extra Drill would still be quite a good lead, though. I think Extra Extra Drill Salamence will be nice, and it's going to be it's going to be weird to Mega Evolve here. Like I've, I've Mega Evolved the Blastoise a couple of times in the MBL, but it's going to be interesting having Mega Revolutions back. Now, I think I do want Infernape because I can make use of his Sun, and then my Thunderous can make use of his Electric Terrain, so I might go with that. But I need Suicune. I don't think I should bring Suicune against Raichu Coco. And Superior is threatened by the Sun stuff because he can get his Venusaur into terrain and sludge bomb me. And it doesn't look so good against this team. Especially because I can't glare his electric types as well. So I'm going to go with, with these four. So here we go. This is, let's hope I get past turn one this time. <laughs> Hopefully my farm internet holds. So will he go with his Sun mode? I would expect either Sun or or electric. Probably electric. But if it's electric, that's pretty good. Unless he's like Focus Blast Raichu. Yeah, okay, that's good. Now you would expect Fake Out into Excadrill. Because surely that's the one threatening. And I'm not sure... With my Salamence, because it's... No, Mega Salamence. I was going to say I don't really know the cards of Mega Salamence. That Electric Seed. Oh, wow, okay. That might be able to take my Earthquake now. Interesting. But, yeah, I was going to say that I don't know the Mega Salamence calc, but its Special Defense stays the same. So, theoretically, I would be able to survive a Tapu Koko Thunderbolt with my Salamence. Am I bringing the back? Infernape and Thunderous. I do still want to just try an Earthquake here. And I think I will just try and Dragon Dance. Because there's not much else that Salamence can do here. And if I do get out the Dragon Dance, then I can actually threaten something. And I want to learn a Calc. Hopefully I can learn a Calc. Actually, I won't be able to because I'll Earthquake. No, no, I will be faster because I'll be Dragon Dancing. But it should be Fake Out into Excadrill, which is fine. 
Is it going to be like HP ice or something? It just doesn't gleam. I do take that. Is that life orb? That is life orb. I thought it would be life orb. So this is pretty good. I was right. Who does threaten the knockout onto my salamence here? But I'm not sure if an earthquake with an electric seed now can knock out his Raichu. I am going to go for the Earthquake, and I will just protect here with Salamence, because Raichu can outspeed and knock me out, I would assume. Maybe if he's Electric Seed, he might be bulky and uh, plus two, he wouldn't have enough speed to outspeed my plus one Salamence, but I'm not sure. This is pretty safe, though. Unless he's got something like Focus Blast on his Raichu, then Excadrill will be able to get off its Earthquake here. Okay, no Protect from Raichu, at least. So that's good. I just protect from Coco, that's fine. So, if this knocks out his Raichu, then I'm looking really good. But if it doesn't, then I'm going to have to lose my Salamence or let something in the back take a Thunderbolt. Now, hopefully Electric Seed doesn't save him here. Raichu's got really bad defense, so hopefully not. Good, good. So, now I'm looking really nice. Because I threaten the knockout onto the Tapu Coco as well. And I'll just return into whatever comes in now. Because I'll definitely outspeed everything at the moment. So you'd have to send in his Ninetales and then his Venusaur. That's not what you want to send the Ninetales first. Because now I can just go for Earthquake again. And I will just return. I could. I could Dragon Dance. So surely his only way out here is to sacrifice his Coco. And get the switch into Ninetales so that his Venusaur can outspeed. But even then... I can still just Earthquake things. Because I do want to drag- like, I kind of want to Dragon Dance a second time, expecting Venusaur to protect, so that he can get his Sun in, and then I would outspeed the Venusaur, but then I'm still just Earthquaking with Excadrill. And then I've got my Infernape in the back with a Sash, so that would be fine, so... Yeah, I'm just gonna Earthquake, and I'm gonna go for a turn, not a second Dragon Dance. I do think I could get a second Dragon Dance here, his Venusaur should protect, but... That would be too greedy, yeah. Yeah, I could have Dragon Danced. Oh well. Um, so my Choice Scarf is going to come through on my Excadrill here, which is really nice. It's a shame I didn't go for Dragon Dance, because he's going to bring in Ninetales now, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have told you exactly what happens and not capitalised on it, but I think I still should be fine. Unless he's a Choice Scarf Ninetales. No, I definitely did want to Dragon Dance a second time. But he could have very easily Sludge Bombed into my Salamence. Predicting my Dragon Dance, but I said, yeah, it was Ninetales, so I, I did say exactly what would happen and didn't go for the the play, but oh well. My Earthquake still should knock out the Ninetales, so this is only bad if he's a Scarf Ninetales now. I'm not sure how common that is in Battle Spot Doubles, because I barely played it at all, but yeah, with my Thunderous and Infernape. I could still even outspeed his Venus, well, if he's like bulky, I could outspeed with my Salamence. I don't expect to, but. It should, it should be fine. Only a Scarf Ninetales would be bad. And I am still faster in the sun, which is really nice. So I didn't need to get greedy with the, the second Dragon Dance, which is nice. And then this Earthquake uh, should clean up onto this Ninetales. Not quite single target, but should still be fine. Ninetales' defense isn't that great. And it KO'd a, a plus one defense Raichu, which is probably kind of equivalent to a Ninetales. So that's pretty nice. So... First proper game with this team in Battle Spot Doubles and pretty much just sweep through, which is really nice. Choice Scarf and Extra Drill is still the, still the choice. Or still the play, more like. I mean, anything is a choice on any Pokemon, but not much is the play. But that was the play. So, that was nice. It's probably going to update with my disconnection now, so I'm going to go right back to 1500. I'm not going to be able to climb much at all, especially because I'm going to be busy focusing on worlds. I have to revise for an exam uh, in early September, so. Got lots of stuff going on. There is, yeah, there's, there's the... Oh, I have climbed above the 1500s, though, so that's nice. But got the NBL stuff going on as well. Which Team Jamie have been doing pretty well in. I mean, it's... We're kind of in cut, but not officially. Like, just the numbers say that we're not actually in cut yet, but hopefully we will be. We're actually going to be fighting Cyberbaz soon, so... If we manage to beat them, or like any any team, any, any of the three teams left, then we'll cut. But okay. Now, Alolan Nine Tails is again something I haven't faced. 
And my Salamence actually underspeeds alone with Nine Tails. So, not the most promising thing yet. I do want to lead with Infernape though. Infernape is really nice. It is a shame that Nine Tails outspeeds Infernape. It's not going to do much back, but it's going to break my Sash. It's going to break the Sash with the Hail anyway, but. Still think it's a good lead. Thunderous does outspeed alone on Nine Tails though, and so does Excadrill. I could just go with Excadrill Thunderous. Because then I'll be able to stop any kind of Aurora Veils. If he leads with Kangaskhan, though, he gets his fake out. Do I want Salamence here? I do. I think I do. It's not scared off that much by Nine Tails. I'll just have to deal with it in another way. Um, do I want my own Suicune to match his Tailwind? I don't think so. I'm going to go with the Excadrill Thunderous. With Infernape and Salamence in the back. So if he does leave with Kangaskhan, like, mo like people shouldn't leave with Kangaskhan in front of an Infernape. I mean, if they're in a focus, then they can get through, get past the fake out that way, but then they're only hitting with a regular Kangaskhan, which isn't that strong. So, he shouldn't leave with Kangaskhan, but people do. Or people did in 15. But this, with this lead, I can stop an Aurora Veil. Now, that's pretty good. I will take that. It's interesting seeing Arcanine still in Battle Spot Doubles when Landorus is back. And there's, like, all the fire types again. Not, like, literally just Arcanine and, like, Torkoal. And that's pretty much it. And Marowak as well, I guess. Marowak will be interesting in, in this new format. So I think I do want to just Earthquake. He can very easily fire move into my Exodrill. And that would likely knock it out, but I would be able to get my Earthquake off first. And I think the priority should be stopping the Aurora Veil, because... After this Earthquake, his Arcanine should be in Thunderbolt's range, so... Unless this is like a Scarf Nine Tails, which is not. Okay, that's, that's a fair move, that's a fair move. So he is likely going to be knocking out my Excadrill here. It's a shame I didn't go for my move on Thunderous that I always love to go for. That does a lot of damage, that's really nice. Is that going to be a berry? Like, berry's a thing now? Okay, it's not. If I'd have Thunderbolted into Arcanine, that would have been really nice, but he should be killing himself. excadrill has got, like, high HP, so he should be KOing, KOing himself to recoil here. So, trading one for one, but... I did bring in uh, Infernape, so now I can fake out and Thunderbolt into the Ninetales. I'm not sure a Life or Thunderbolt would be able to knock out the Ninetales in one. And I do need to take care of it before my Salamence comes in. Else this is going to be far too risky. I'm hoping this isn't Kangaskhan now. It very easily could be, which it's going to be. So, not the best. Because I do want to just straight up close combat the Kangaskhan, because you should never ever fake out an Inferno. But then again, I can just Encore him into fake out if he goes for fake out. But the problem is my Thunderous isn't bulky, so it just drops to a return. Slash double edge. Yeah, I do want a close combat. And I'm going to Thunderbolt. I think this is going to come down to my Salamence underspeeding his Ninetales, which is going to be really bad. Okay, that's pretty good. Did he have a ground type? He had... Oh, this is nice. This is really nice. I'm okay with him faking out my Thunderous now. So he's not going to go for any inner focus fake out, so I would assume he's attacking here. Now, is he going to be bulky on his Kangaskhan? Like with Aurora Veil, that would make perfect sense. Because if he's no bulk, this um, close combat should knock out his Kangaskhan. This won't knock out Suicune. They do um, EV themselves to live. But is this close combat going to knock out Kangaskhan? That's actually really big now. He is going to have enough bulk to live. And that's, um, that's definitely bulk invested because... It's a 93%. Oh, just a power-up punch. That's really good. That is actually pretty good. But am I in Sucker Punch range with Inferno? Because Sucker Punch has been nerfed, but I'm going to take Hail Damage as well. But 
he's going to be in one more round of hail. No, not with the Suicune, but with the Kangaskhan he is. Now his play here should definitely be to Sucker Punch Thunderous. Right? It should definitely be to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to intimidate him back down to plus one and then Thunderbolt KO his Suicune. His Kangaskhan will drop to um, the Hail and then I think that the Hail should run out the next turn so he would have to rely on Blind Blizzards. Because a plus one Sucker Punch just definitely with the nerf shouldn't knock out my Thunderous here. And I'll be able to get myself into a position where I can fake out on Dragon Dance, which is really nice. Or he's going to let his Ninetales take a lot of chip, which is actually really good. It is Sucker Punch. And it was onto the Infernic, so that's even better now. That's really good. But again, like, it's pretty important whether Thunderous is in... No, I was going to say if it's in Sucker Punch range, but it's dead. So, fine. So now, now I can go for Thunderbolts to KO his Ninetales. And... What, how much was this Suicune on? That's enough. That's enough. I'm pretty sure that's enough. <laughs> so I'm going to Mega Evolve and go for the best move on Salamence. <laughs> I'm going to go for Giga Impact into Suicune. I'm going to go for Thunderbolt into Ninetales. Okay, are we going to see a Protect on the Ninetales? Because you would like he would assume that his like I have to do this. I would have definitely return and Thunderbolted otherwise, but my Salamence under speed to Ninetales, so I do have to do it this way round. So, this is nice. The Ninetales is KO'd, and then watch this, 90% of the time. But watch this, the best move on Salamence by far. It's been nerfed. Aerial has been nerfed. But that's perfect. That's why you run the Giga Impact. It does so much damage. And I'm so I'm so pleased that it's it's coming through even like oh, like over two years later. So that's really nice. Like if I was a normal Salamence with max speed, then I'd just return into the Nine Tails and I thumb buttons to the Suicune. That's a hundred percent win con. But I had to do it that way around because my Salamence was um, adamant, so that's really nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm so pleased I pulled that off. I, I was I was hoping to pull off a Giga Impact at some point when I've been using this team on Battles for Doubles, and I, I'm, I'm very pleased I managed to do it within the first two games. So that's really nice. I, I'm not sure how long I would carry on just using this specific team until I would edit it to like what the updates I would do for Battle Spot Doubles, but we'll see. Because this is likely going to be the only video this week because this is already late in the week and I'm going to Liverpool, but we'll see in the future weeks. So, hopefully I can get some more videos out. It won't be any VGC17, it will just be Battle Spot Doubles if I am doing some Battle Spot, um, Battle Spot videos. So, hopefully that's still entertaining enough for you, because I, I do need to completely focus on one team, not all the other teams. And I'm definitely not putting up my Worlds team onto YouTube, I'm afraid, and at least until after Worlds. But, look forward to, to that then. Thanks for watching.